Hi guys, welcome to Just Jordan 33. 33. Just Jordan. Just Jordan 33. We, if you guys are new to this channel, we are not Just Jordan 33. Ah. We are her parents and her sister, and she ah. is away right now serving a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So we are going to be giving you an update on how her mission is going. We left off with transfers, and she did end up going to Des Moines, Iowa. Um, so she was serving in Iowa City, Iowa, and now she's in Des Moines. And I'm going to read her email, some of the notes that she has. She says there is so much work to do here and she feels so blessed and she loves it so much. And her new companion, she says, is seriously the most incredible human being. She really gets along really well with this companion as though she was her actual sister. What the heck, I'm being replaced. You are being replaced. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> So, but she says she has the best mindset and attitude about every situation and is really ready to work hard. Does that mean you do too? Because she compared you to, compared the companion know. to her sister. Sounds like Audrey standards right there. <laughs> it does sound like Audrey. So, um, she's doing re really, really well in Des Moines. Um, but she said it was really hard to leave Iowa City and it, it was sad and it felt kind of weird too, like, because she had been there for so long. And so then to leave, it just kind of felt weird. But she was doing good in Des Moines today. Actually, did this service project, which is really funny. She says, we did a service for a member where we carried a 400 pound what? tub all the way from their garage to the second story of their house. And she says, I guess you could say I'm really buff now or something, right? She is a strong, she is pretty strong, Just right? have some mountains. She pounds. lifted 400 pounds, guys. No. She says, nah, reality was that the elders, which are the male missionaries, did did it all and i was just there for emotional support and to get water she was sitting on <laughs> <Whoa>. top <laughs> wait so she's like whoa go team <laughs> there are tubs that are 400 pounds is that normal for a bathtub yeah cast iron is super heavy so it could have been a really big claw type so yeah, could have that's crazy, crazy. Anyway, she says You're the people. Supposed to empty the water out. By the uh, way, yeah, right. <laughs> Tips. Okay, she says the people in um, Des Moines really love to feed you. This is really funny. She is in an area where um, people are really, really friendly, and so she says she's never been as full in her life. And yesterday she had, which was not yesterday at this reading because we're three weeks behind. <laughs> she had um, four dinners. And she hasn't eaten since. Four dinners, Kay, in one night. She had four dinners. Not just that, she also got three jumbo slices of cake from separate people. <laughs> so she's like, I'm not complaining, but my stomach is wowza. <laughs> so loving it. The people there are so good to her. And um, it's going really well. She does want to leave with a, this week with a little bit of advice. This comes from the mission nurse. And it's talking about change in life. And um, she says that sometimes we get in our routines and it's easy to keep doing the same things. Life becomes comfortable and convenient. Sometimes you don't want to lose the good that you've already found. But God is ever aware and all things are under his control. So this is the advice that the mission nurse gave. The very core of Satan is his unwillingness to change. She talked about how in the premortal life he knew that Christ's plan was better and he knew what the right choice was. But because he had hardened his heart so much to the point that he was unwilling to change, he became stubborn in his decision to blatantly rebel against his father. This ultimately led to his separation and downfall. She said, however, that on the complete opposite spectrum, everything Christ stands for is change. The whole purpose of his atonement is that we might be able to change and become better. His gospel is one of change and growth. So it really boils, boils down to your decision. The world you... The world will change and you will go through hard things, but if you want, they can give the experience and shall be for thy good. So will you submit to the Father's plan and let him morph you into the person he wants you to be even when it's hard to do? Mm. So she says, to be quite frank, her first five months were really rough. She prayed for refinement and boy did she get it. So she's learned a lot in hindsight and um. things that she had to go through that she wouldn't have learned otherwise if she hadn't gone through them. So if anyone is out there 
is struggling right now on a mission or not, that they might be blessed to see a new perspective. She says, I pray that you will receive the strength and courage to fully give everything to the Lord and look for what he is trying to teach you during this time. I promise that he is there. Remember that when you allow him to change you for the good, you're assimilating the attributes of Christ and therefore shortening the distance between you and him. Y'all are awesome. Keep on going. <laughs> so. oh, wow. That's, I'll just say amen to that. I know. That was a sermon right there. She did good. Holy cow. Very good. Good job, Jordan. Okay, so for this week, she says in the subject line, I don't even know how to title these anymore. <laughs> I'm going to read it from last to the first to the middle because she wrote it on her P day, which is her preparation day, the day that she can do a whole bunch of fun things. What she was able to do, she was able to go on a 30-mile bike ride. What? I couldn't get her to go on bike rides here. Now she's jumping on a bike and going 30 miles. I don't bike ride, so that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, that, that, okay, 30 miles in wow. one day, if you haven't been bike riding, that she's going to have a hard time walking the next day because her legs are going to be so sore. Yeah. Anyhow, she says it was super, super fun. Super, super. I don't think that's Spanish. <laughs> <You know? laughs> super, it felt super. so nice to be outside and finding the hidden gems of Des Moines. That's pretty cool. All right, then she said... This last week, they were driving to an appointment and there was a car accident right in front of her. A car got T-boned right in front of her and it was crazy. It was super scary. She, she didn't said, even tell us that on our phone call. We no. found out about me. this in an, about email. It in an email. She told she you. She told me. She didn't tell me. I was like, what? Yeah. You got to tell us these things. <laughs> so she goes on to kind of saying that it kind of got them all shook up and everything. But she says, honestly... She feels super protected while she's out on a mission, and she knows that God is aware of them and protects them. And I would agree with that. And then she reads the next part, which is miracle. She like spells it all out, like four, four of each letters. So miracle. <laughs> <laughs> she had to translate in church, and she hasn't had a lot of experience in translating because somebody came that only spoke English, or and, Spanish. No, it says English. Oh, uh, so she had to translate oh. from Spanish to English, and she thought she was doing a really because poor she goes time. when she goes to church. Um, she goes; it's all in Spanish because she's with Spanish-speaking people. Yep. So it's not all, everything. All the talks given are in Spanish. Talks, prayers, everything so. is Spanish. So she uh, somebody came that visited that only spoke English, and so Jordan was. Nice enough to be able to translate for them. That would be so hard. Yeah, she said the first hour, because it's two hour segments. So the first hour, she said it went pretty well. She said the second hour, and I'm going to read. i got to put my glasses on here. Let's see, let's see. She says, I had never translated for someone before, so I was definitely praying for some help. Sacrament meeting, which is like the first meeting, went well, and I could understand everything for the most part. But second hour, she went, ooh. Second hour, it was insane. They were deep diving into Bible stories, and they used so many random words. Not to mention, they change all the names of the people when it's in Spanish. So, like, uh, John is not John, it's... What is it? I don't John? know. No, like... I don't. Joseph isn't Joseph, it's Jose. Jesus is Jesus. Anyhow, the names, the, the names change, right? So, so she was trying to translate them back, trying to figure out what that was like. And she said, yikes, I need to study up on my Spanish Bible terms. And then she said, uh, at the end of the meeting, the person she was translating for pulled her aside. She said, um, hermana, that lesson was exactly what I needed to hear. The Spirit spoke to my soul. And that really touched Jordan because she said, the Spirit is the real teacher and things will come to pass if they are meant to. And here's her message for this week. She says, our weaknesses do not hold back God. So if God has a will that he wants to have done, he will get it taken care of. Even though we have weaknesses ourselves, he will help men and women make their weaknesses become strengths. And in this case, Jordan's translation, she thought she was being really weak, but in, actual, in actuality, it became a strength and the person heard the message that God wanted her to hear. So that's really cool. Yeah. So it's like you find weaknesses in yourself or in those around you. Which we all have. God makes up for that and he can use those weaknesses to actually for good. Okay. Now it's my turn. Okay. So like David said, Jordan went on a 30 mile bike ride and she was so sore for the next couple of days. She got up really early to go on the bike ride. And then after she got a trim and some low lights by one of the ladies 
Is it? It's the mission nurse's daughter-in-law. Me? Yeah, daughter-in-law. I think daughter-in-law. Yeah, so she she has some new hair. And then she, a fun thing that happened this week is she got to go to her first ever quinceanera, which I have never been to, so that's really cool. That would be so fun to go. I've passed by when they've been having them, but I've never been to one. Yeah. Invite me. <laughs> so Dora got to go with her companion. They helped blow up balloons and set decorations for the party. And then once the fiesta started, they were waitresses. And um, she says a little backstory is every week they go and visit a member who owns a taco truck and they stop by for lunch and he teaches them new Mexican recipes and stuff like that. And hey. he says that he's taught them so well that now everyone wants them to make them food. Oh, I want her to make a me <laughs> so food. They all want I them. can't wait. I can't wait either. I keep I learning know. those skills, Jordan. <laughs> yes, they all want her and her companion to come and make food and serve at their parties. <laughs> and then she said there was a funny moment that happened this week. So she went and stopped by a person that they're teaching and they accidentally crashed their party, the person's <laughs> party. So this is what she said. We stroke to, to go knock on the door, and there's just music and a bunch of people out in the driveway. Keep in mind that they were blocked before by the cars, and so we were already up by the door by the time we noticed them. So she didn't see them walking up to the house. <laughs> and then she realized that she realized what we were getting ourselves into, but it was far too late to turn around at that point. Imagine how awkward that would be. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like you see all these people, then you just like skedaddle. <laughs> Um, we decided to own it and walk up to the herd of people with confidence. We are throwing olas around left and right. Hola, hola, hola. <laughs> and then she said, eventually make the rounds. Unfortunately, no one wanted to hear a message, but we did make a good 20 new friends. <laughs> and before they knew it, they were uh, the people at the party were motioning for them to take a seat and grab some enchiladas. <laughs> so they politely declined because they already had two dinners that day. <laughs> but that wasn't an acceptable answer for them, so... They were besties and they had to eat. <laughs> Third dinner. Three Third dinners. Dinner. So the people quickly dished them up two plates. Uh -huh. And um, then they finally found out that the person that they were originally going to teach, why they went to the house, wasn't home. And they were busy. <laughs> and so they couldn't meet. So they start making their way back to their car after the dinner. And the dude runs up to them and... He hands them a pepper and says, you want it? It's not spicy. <laughs> and Jordan's not an expert on peppers, but she could probably guess that that would make them cry. Like, it was probably pretty spicy. It looked like a red, like... I saw the picture, which red you'll see here. Spicy. I think it's a jalapeno. Yeah, and they're spicy it's, right off the vine. Yeah, it looks like a jalapeno pepper because I'm growing those in my garden. <laughs> yeah, so she, they took it and they brought it home and put it in their fridge and maybe one day they'll try it when they're yeah. brave enough. Just chop it up and put a little bit in a little, you know, little... <laughs> chopped up in your eggs or whatever a little sprinkle of jalapeno yeah, just sprinkle. and then uh, on a more serious note she says that there have been a lot of times on her mission so far when someone when they somehow ended up visiting specific people in the exact moments that they needed it and one time was this past week so it was during prime time which is um after six on mondays for them and they said literally all their plans that they had scheduled fell through so they, st they tried stopping by a bunch of people and no one was answering their doors and it finally came to a point where they had to sit in the car for a couple of minutes and think where does God exactly need them right now. And then when they did that, they remembered they had a referral that they received earlier this week and quickly visited the lady. And they really bonded with this lady and they really got along and the spirit, she said, was so strong and that was where she was supposed to be. So... Sometimes you have to take a minute to listen to what you're being guided to because we live in hustle bustle world and sometimes you don't really feel it until you take a minute to hear and sometimes things fall through and you think it's like that's not how you want things to go and it actually ends up for the better. True. Alrighty, so that's our three week update on Jordan. Mm. This is probably how it's going to honestly go is every, every three. Because it's just hard to keep up with everything in life but anyway it actually works good because i get to read a week you get to read exactly it is working pretty good this way um though i do love the weekly updates it's just harder to sometimes get it done it's a little surprising but 
<laughs> anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed this update. I know some of you specifically have been wanting this update, have been talking to Jordan about why we haven't updated. So shout out to you, you know who you are. <laughs> um, here's an update for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.